All right, guys, today is Friday. Couldn't have come at a better time, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so look what we got. Got a little progress on the uh, Dodge Doors here. Dodge Doors. Grand Caravan. Looking pretty good. Uh, so here's what I've gotten done. I did this last night, late last night. And basically, like I said, guys, this is going to be a really fast, quick job. I mean, I'm only getting paid... I don't even think I'm getting paid a hundred dollars to do this. <laughs> you know, this is just to help a buddy out of my dad's. So we're literally just hacking through, you know, sprayed. I think I'm just gonna get paid a hundred bucks. But it's a good little filler job because we didn't have anything to do either today and yesterday, basically. Uh, so <clears throat> basically, I've gotten this piece here all fixed. Uh, if you recall. It had a bunch of the uh, paint peeling on it. I sanded it down with the DA. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm still kind of so sick here. Um, got her down with 120. And, I, you know, hand sanded a little bit. And I got it nice and smooth. There's this one scuff, as you can see right there. If the camera can pick it up. It's on macro right now, so hopefully it can pick it up. But, um, you know, I got most of it cleaned up as best I'm going to get. The gold shouldn't show it too, too bad. <clears throat> uh, we had this conversation yesterday at the paint store with the owner of the doors. And I was like, what do you want me to do with these letters on the back? <clears throat> you want me just to spray over them? And the guy overheard me uh, saying, oh, I should peel the letters off and we'd loom. Which, you know, I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. You know, what? I'll, I'll peel them off and do them. And the uh, owner of the doors said, um... To the, uh, to the guy at the place where we bought the paint yesterday. He said, most likely though, when you do this, you'll never be able to get the emblems back off. And, well, it turns out, this white door was blue at one time. And I guess this is actually going to be the third paint job it's had. Uh, someone's already done what the body shop guy, paint supply store, told us. Uh... There, you peel the emblems off and then re glued them back on. So it's like, oh, son of a bitch. So I guess we're just spraying right over the emblems. Fuck it. It's a quick little job. But yeah, the door used to be blue. Uh, the hood, yeah. I'm not sanding friggin' the inside of the hood because it's just a bitch to do. Uh, I'm literally, honestly, just gonna miss the paint on this. It, it's just literally gonna get misted on the underside of the hood. And the same with the. Uh, underside of here. So what I went ahead and did, it's not the dealer recommended type way of doing it, but I called up my uncle and he was like, oh yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. Um, what I did was, I obviously I washed down both the panels first uh, with a little bit of power purple. And that already etches in to the paint. I mean, guys, don't ever use this stuff on your cars. I'm telling you guys that right now. If you're going to use any engine block or something like that, go ahead and use it. Do not spray this stuff on your paint. Because after seeing what it did to these doors yesterday, I was amazed. Literally almost melted the clear coat right off the paint here. And uh, so I did yesterday as I washed them, scrubbed them down with the power purple. And then I just basically shot the underside of this hood with a little bit of etching primer. And it should work out pretty good. I mean, it's etching the paint pretty good. Um, somebody again repainted this hood. This hood was white, you know. I can tell it's it's still white underneath there, but I had to fix a little problem up front here. Uh, where is it? Up oh, right here. There's a little something going on there, so I figured ah, I'll just you know do a little bit of lighty light on there. But the underside of this has already been scuffed. You know, basically the main panels here I get in the scuff deal. But the underside of the panels, this is just a little bonus. So I figured I will just shoot it with a little bit of etch primer. And as you can see, I still got the door panel trim on. I didn't even bother pulling that off. It's just stupid to do that. You know? Whoa. But, uh, yeah. So that's what we got going on with the Dodge doors. Let's talk about what we got going on. What's in my hand here? The camera. I don't know. Uh, I noticed something yesterday that is in yesterday's video there when I was editing it. Uh, seems like in this lower corner it's not picking up as great as it should be. So I'm thinking maybe the pixels are starting to go or something. I, I don't really know. And I just noticed that my camera is about to die. Because these batteries, these fucking chinkinese batteries, yeah, they suck. I tell you guys that every day. 
Let's change out another battery, see how long this one lasts. Alright, Chinkanese battery is all swapped out. So, I noticed on this camera, like I was saying, it's got a little bit of something going on. I thought it was dirt in the camera, but it wasn't. So, I'm not really sure what's going on there, but we're going to rock with this camera until it dies, basically. Because, well, I finally got the uh, offer put in. Uh, I've been watching this computer on eBay for quite some time. Actually, it's just two days. And uh, <laughs> uh, I ended up getting a MacBook. Uh, so, a MacBook Pro is just a cheap little... $190 computer that the dude wanted. I think he wanted like $300 for so I talked now a little bit. And uh, yeah. So hopefully the video quality is going to be better once we get this new MacBook. So we can use uh, uh, iMovie. Because I noticed iMovie does a pretty good software. And we're going to get rid of this uh, Magic Movie Edit Pro <coughs> uh, bullshit that keeps on losing my videos. Because I can't tell you how many times it's lost a video lately. So, yeah, that's what we got going on. Hopefully, that'll be next week, and uh, we'll get some better video quality put out for you guys. Because it's only been two years now that I've been on YouTube, and we can put no shitty-ass quality, unless I do a direct upload. Anyway, enough talking about that. Let's get on with this. We got us a Polaris Scrambler starter came in this morning. If I can get it out of the box. Nice new starter. I think this was, uh, I don't know. 40 bucks. So the starter's in. Uh, the top end kit for the motor should be in later on in about, about another half hour, I'd say. Maybe an hour. Uh, so we usually get the mail. So that should be in shortly, along with another set of um, gasket maker. So that should be in today as well. And we should have basically most of the parts I need to reassemble this engine, which is pretty good. And yeah, so basically all the parts I need will be in, for the engine anyway, will be in today. And then this weekend we can start working on the uh, Polaris Scrambler again. And then I got to call up the company later on today to figure out where, when I'm going to be expecting the rest of the parts for the Polaris Scrambler. Hopefully though it will be in uh, sometime late next week if possible. But you know how that goes. Uh, I checked the order status on the Toro here for the parts for it. Uh, looks like we should have all the parts in tomorrow night, I mean. What am I talking about? Monday night. I keep on thinking for some reason I thought, yeah. <laughs> so, the parts for the Toro here will be in uh, Monday night. So, probably Tuesday we'll get cracking on this thing and hopefully get her out the door by the end of the week of next week. So, we're looking pretty good on stuff, guys. Things are really starting to happen. It's pretty kick-ass. So anyway, I'm going to start finishing up these doors. Uh, I'm going to just get them prepped so I can start spraying here shortly. And we'll be gold and we'll be mint tits and maybe we'll be installing these doors by... I don't know. It's going to take a little bit for the paint to dry, maybe 3.30, 4 o'clock hopefully. I'm supposed to install the doors tomorrow, but I want to do some stuff tomorrow. So let's try and knock these doors out today. That'd be awesome. Well, the doors are no longer white. They're somewhat gold. First coat on this door. Still got another coat to do, and I got one more coat to do on the hood. I'm doing three coats on each, I think, is the dent I was telling you about. But we ain't touching it. Nope. Not in the contract. Yeah. But I've already done the underneath sides. And as you can tell, looks pretty decent, even though you guys can't really see much. Ugh. Just a little bit of... Underneath and that's about it But we got two more coats to do in here. Hold my coat on there. We're looking pretty good uh, One thing I noticed is when I sprayed the Door you can kind of sort of see where I sand it. I didn't sand right there, but it should be all right I think once the flare coat goes over it, it'll be mint it's so I'm Gonna lay down one more coat on that anyway uh, Yeah Sparingly gonna have just enough paint, I think. I'm almost just a little under a half, and I got like this much left in the gun, so I think I'm just gonna have enough paint to do what I need to do, and that's it. If you guys asked last time on how to mix this stuff, I can kind of, sort of give you guys a quick little way of doing it, uh, paint wise, anyway, and I'll show you how to do the clear, maybe kind of. Um, 
Every paint is a little bit different. This is just PP, PPG shop line paint. And basically you got numbers on the side of your mixing cup here. And what you're going to do is you're going to do half uh, paint and then half reducer on this stuff here. Um, so I will mix up uh, probably 200 in total milliliters. So if this camera had like a much better autofocus here. Let's see if we can't focus in on it. Are we fucking kidding me? We can't focus? Like this is just ridiculous. Okay, anyway. 100's right there. That's the first I'm going to go up. And once we do the uh, reducer, it's going to go up to the 200. So, we'll go right up to the 100. Yeah, that's good enough. Just got a little bit more left, maybe. Alright, that should be good. Now for the reducer, same deal, PPG shop line reducer. Just get it all at once, just quick and easy. Not the most expensive paint in the world. And now we'll go up to the 200, because 100 plus 100 is 200. Let the bubbles settle down there. Actually, might be, eh, maybe just a little teeny bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just somewhere in that ballpark range um, to get your mixing somewhat accurate. Put this back on there. We ain't going no high tech. Mix it up. Doot, 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 doot. Like I said, guys, this is literally a fast job. We're not going crazy on it, you know. The van's not even worth maybe. <laughs> I can't even tell you. I think maybe the van's worth maybe a thousand bucks. <laughs> the way it is right now. So anything to get it just a little better and a little healthier looking. Yeah, it's better. Oh, here it is. Damn, it's better than what it is. So I'm gonna pour this stuff into that gun, and I'm gonna start spraying again. And we'll be looking pretty good. Hopefully we'll lay down the clear in about the next, probably about a half hour, 40 minutes or so. So we're looking pretty good. All right, Grand Caravan doors are painted. Just getting ready to shoot the clear next. Had a little incident right here. You guys. Right there. Yeah. The uh, top of the gun leaked out everywhere I I was spraying it, I was like, oh, I wonder how much I have left, because I still had that trim piece to do this dangle in there. So I cracked open the top, took a look on the inside, and screwed the cap back on, but I didn't screw the cap on right. Started to spray it, and guess what? Puked out its freaking stuff right there. Right there, but it's gone. And I thought it was all set, so I came over to clean up with the tissue, started spraying it over here, and then I sprayed it right there, but I got it out. Once the clear coat hits it though, you won't see it because you can just wet sand it right over it. And I'm only going to be wet sanding the hood because, well, the rear gate's just pointless to wet sand. But, anyway, let's uh, show you guys what we're going to put some clear. We need this cup, another filter. This is the clear. I got a little bit extra clear this time. I uh, just to have around the shop. I didn't really pay for the materials guys. The other guy did. So yeah. Cost him I think like $106 or $108 materials. So it's not bad. What's ever left over I'll keep. So but this is the hardener. Uh, it's kind of sort of hard to explain how I do it. It's you get a fall on the charts. Um, let me try and figure out what chart it is. It is, I want to say, I'll have to look at my sheet, but you mix it, dump this stuff in, and then it's supposed to be like a quarter of what's left of, of this. So let's say you put, uh, I don't even know how to do it. Let's say you put half of this into, let's put, let's say, we, all right, I can do it this way. It's easier to do it this way. Put half of this in the container. So let's say I brought it up to 200 milliliters. Um, 
I, I can't even honestly do the friggin' math, but I, I know how it works. It's, it's not 50 to 1, it's like quarter to 1, I guess we can call it. Or, I, I don't even know if you want to call it 50 to 1. It's, it's a quarter of whatever you're going to put into this, basically. It's kind of sort of complicated for me to explain, but I know how to do it. <laughs> I gotta look at the sheet again. But that's how you do it. I'm gonna lay down a clear coat, and then we're gonna go have some lunch. Awesome. Dodge doors are done. Well, just gonna pull up the paper, but they're all done. Shot them up pretty clean. No dirt in them. Very surprising. A little bit of orange peel in it, but no dirt. That's a good thing, and surprisingly, I didn't have any fish eyes. Like, usually we always have fish eyes in the paint shop. Holy, looks like we got a little bit of paint on the lens down there. Yeah, I'll have to clean that up later on. But it looks pretty good. It's too bad I didn't want anything about the dents. That would have been a nice hood. Whatever. It's a quick little $80 job. All I left to do on the hood is just when we get it on. Let it cure, and then we'll come back, and then we'll just wet sand and buff the hood. And I think the tailgate's fine. Tailgate kind of so it sits in. You're not going to really see it. There's no dirt in it. It's just an orange peely. Not too bad. I think it looks pretty good. But I did figure out the uh, mixing on it. I didn't quite think of it. It actually even says it right in the can. It's a 4 to 1 mix. It says it right there. Probably right in front of me too the whole time. But it's just a 4 to 1 mix. Not too bad. Add a little bit of extra hardener in it. Just to really secure up good. Um, but I guess I finished way before I thought I was going to. I was hoping they... I don't think I'm going to get the doors on today. It's only 141. Not bad. 3-4 hours worth of work if that. Let's see. It was an hour last night. Then we're out here around 11, 12, 1, yeah, about, about 4 hours worth of work. So that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. But anyway, as you can tell, we're still sponsored by Kleenex Tissues because I'm still stuffed up. It's getting ridiculous. Hopefully tomorrow I feel better. But anyway, we'll uh, continue on what we're doing. Hopefully he'll come by with the van so we can throw the doors on. If not, we'll be doing that tomorrow. And my battery's dead. Twice in one day. Awesome. Well, we got a little something missing in here, obviously. So, it's uh, 8 o'clock. And uh, I'm actually just getting done here. Uh, well, actually, I'm just getting started. I actually just got back from dinner. I'm actually getting ready to pull this motor off, or pull it out of the little casing underneath there, and I'm going to start doing a little bit of work on it. I bought this pan on the AutoZone here. Some degreaser, I'm going to start degreasing the uh, engine. Hopefully it plays off pretty good. Got me a couple of Italian mints. Love these kind. Went to dinner, so I got a couple of minties. I'm going to start degreasing that engine. Uh... Only took about, I don't know, the most hardest part was to try to align that hood. Um, I don't know, all in total, about less than an hour to do to put the rear hatch on, put all the uh, plastics on, and the uh, front hood on. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, we got it all done. I got the old door sitting outside. I'll probably show you guys that tomorrow. It's kind of sort of darker right now. Uh, but I did take a picture of the door. I just can't believe how much... It matched. It was like a perfect match. Do it this way. No, nope, need it this way. But it's a friggin' dead on match. And I got the the line stamped near perfect. Like if you look right where my finger is there. And then if we scroll right over here, dead even. So I want that to be perfect. Friggin' autofocus. Come on. But, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't too bad. And uh, the, the, the color match was just unreal. Usually when you paint two different panels, it's usually different. The paint matched dead spot on. Like, you couldn't ask for anything better. And uh, I was amazed. So, that was going out pretty good. And the guy was very pleased with it. 
And uh, he'll be back next week so I can just wet sand and buff the hood. I didn't want to do it today because it was still a little bit wet. Well, it wasn't wet. It was just, it, you're supposed to wait 24 hours for that stuff to cure on. But I didn't want to wait another 24 hours to have it sitting here in the garage all weekend. Uh, because he was going away. So I figured out, oh, we'll just throw the doors on tonight and then get her done. Because I want to bring the quad in here this weekend. I want to have the space and stuff like that. But I don't know if I already showed you. I got the rest of my parts in. Uh, oh yeah, like with Linux pile. Awesome. Feeling a little better though. A little bit of uh, high temp silicone. And I got the top end kit in here. I never heard of this brand before, but I heard quite pretty good reviews on it. I searched about it. I've never heard the name before. And they seem like they get some pretty good reviews. So we're going to try and use it. See how well it is. Um, obviously the piston is in there. I'm not really too big on buying aftermarket parts. Other than like a Wiseco or Wizco, whatever the hell you want to call them. But it seemed like it was pretty cool and they got their own little stamping but I guess this is some kind of special coating that's on here I don't remember what it's called but it's some kind of special coating um not really too familiar with this brand I've never heard it but a lot of people said it was good did a couple of online reviews and they sent me a couple of stickers so that's pretty cool the gasket the wrist pins are in there so that's pretty good but um I never heard of this brand before, so I figured, you know what, I'd give it a shot. Um, usually I'm that kind of guy when I'm working on an engine or rebuilding an engine, I always use OEM factory parts, even on my Articats. Uh, I'm always used, like, it's, they're expensive to use, but I figured, you know what, why don't we try this brand out, give it a shot and see how well it is maybe use in the future i was going to use the wisco pistons and stuff like that but they wanted like 170 dollars for that top end and polaris whew, polaris was expensive for me to do the top end by polaris it was going to be around like 160 i didn't want to spend that much um so i figured i'd try this company off 100 bucks for the whole top end kit and you know what, that's pretty decent. If it lasts maybe two years, I'll be happy. And take it from there, but I heard some good reviews on it. No major problems with it, so that's pretty kick-ass. Wow, they really sent me a lot of stickers. I got one sticker here, two sticker there, and I also got another one on the bottom there in that box. That's pretty cool. But we'll give it a shot, see how well it works. Try it out. But I'm going to set the uh, engine up in that pan, pull the and you know, put it in the pan, start degreasing it, and uh, yeah, take it from there. All right, well, it's 9:20. I'm actually just about getting ready to head in, get right up a little bit, or at least run into the video. Um, mining for silver, I guess we can call it. So I got the engine all degreased, and it came up wicked nice. Looks damn near factory. Minus a couple of dirt spots, but whatever. Uh, I got it pretty clean, and then it kind of sort of clicked into my head. I'm like, you know what? I bet you there's some metal shavings on the inside of this engine from that piston. So I said to myself, all right, well, I'm out of friggin' brake and parts cleaner. I might as well just use a little bit of curb cleaner. So I used a can of curb cleaner, filled at the bottom of this case here. Yeah, with some car cleaner. Uh, keep in mind a two-stroke engine on like one of these type of engines type deals. They work a little bit different than a four-stroke. These actually have uh, needle bearings in the seals so it doesn't need oil basically. But anyway, um, did her all apart and I basically filled her up, spun her around a few times, spun her around a few times and sure enough there was stuff in there. Check that out. That's just some of it. I mean, it's very fine, but there was, like, a couple of good chunks here and there. There was that one there. And I know there was one more in this 
the first time I actually did it in this pan. There's actually a pretty good sized chunk in this pan somewhere. I'll have to dig it out tomorrow when I go to empty it. But um, there's a couple of good chunks. I was like, all right, well, I better, uh, I better start fill up the case a little more, cleaning it out. So I did this about six times now, and it's come out extremely clean. So I'm happy with it. It's, you know, it spins, it spun f smoothly before. But I figured, you know what, I might as well do it, and it, you know, still spins the same way, but it's actually a little bit cleaner, and less of a chance of something happening, so that works out pretty good. No play in the sparing, which is pretty good. Usually, if you pull up and down, there'll be a play, but none really, so that's pretty good. I drained the, uh, the balancer oil while I was at it, so I did that, but the block looks really good. Cleaned up nice. So tomorrow we'll, we'll be reassembling it, which will be pretty good. Pretty good. Spins freely. Um, I got the cylinder in here right now. Just letting it soak. I'm going to just spray it down one more time for the night. Scrub it and let it soak basically. So that's about it for that. And um, yeah, I took a look at the transmission. Just trying to figure out what I got to do to it. Probably the same deal. I'll grab some more braking parts cleaner and stuff like that, and we'll be pretty much good to go there. But I screwed up, as you can tell. I, I was first starting. I first, I usually use this stuff, engine original degreaser, and I don't know, somebody must have been screwed around. I usually just go like that in the back of the shelf. So one can was like that, and I usually just went like that, and then pull it out and threw it in the cart. And sure enough, somebody had engine cleaner foamy and I don't really like the foamy style because it just makes too much of a mess so I ran out I was like oh fuck curry cleaner non fluorinated yeah oh, never ends I guess but anyway I think we're gonna end the video here guys hopefully you guys enjoy the video tomorrow we'll be doing the top end of the uh, plier scrambler 400 with the motor anyway don't know how much video of that we're going to get because, well, you basically, it's just simple stuff. But it'll take most of the day anyway to get most of the stuff all set up on it. Um, you know, that's pretty good. And at least the parts for this thing will be in next week. Or actually, it should be in Monday. So that's pretty good. And hopefully, the rest of the plier scramble hurts will be in next Friday at least. So we can get everything all buttoned up and then next Saturday or Sunday, get everything all secured in, and then it'll be good to go, hopefully. But, that never really works out. Something always happens. So, anyway, we're going to talk to you guys tomorrow. Hopefully you guys will have a good day. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I told you, we got a new computer on the way, too, so we'll be, uh, dishing out nicer video qualities within the next couple of months. Or at least about a week, anyway. So, anyway, enough talking. See you.